Keys from the Golden Vault, the Stygian Gambit. Let's see how you run it. Second level characters. Set in a casino, so a nice backdrop to the adventure. At the Afterlife Casino 3 Dragon Ante Tournament called the Grand Mineros Invitational awards one winner with a sizeable purse and a golden statuette. A former gambler with a score settle hires the characters to steal the statuette as well as gold from the casino's vault before the tournament ends and the winner is declared. Good, there's a time scale on it, I like that. Lovely art. Verity Kai won a lot of tournaments. Verity met numb gambler Quentin Togglepocket. They became friends and they were going to open their own casino and then just as they were about to do that, Quentin disappeared, taking all the money with him and then resurfaced having built his own casino without Verity. So Verity wants you to steal the statuette meant for the prize and retrieve her share of the money from the vault. It's important to her to get him back for the betrayal. So you unlock the music box with the key and you hear this message. Greetings operatives. An ally of the Golden Vault named Verity Kai had her life savings stolen from her by a devious gambling partner. We've found an opportunity to right this wrong. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to infiltrate the Afterlife Casino and steal a statuette and a sum of money. Meet with Verity at the Brine Widow Tavern to learn more details. Good luck, operatives. Yeah, you close the box, the golden key vanishes. You head on down to the Brine Widow. Seems Verity's fairly stern. She's a tiefling. The last person in, she tells to shut the door. It's a nice back room. Here's Verity. Thank you for accepting my invitation. I am Verity Kai. What I'm about to discuss with you requires the utmost secrecy. I can't stress to you enough how important it is that you speak nothing of what you hear within these four walls. The Afterlife Casino is a new Nine Hells themed attraction just outside town. The owner, Quentin Togglepocket, built it using prize money he stole from me, and I'd like you to give him hell. He's hosting a tournament there. I want you to steal the Erinius statue he plans to award as a prize, embarrassing him in front of the big names at the tournament. I also want you to steal back the 5,000 gold pieces he stole from me. Bring the stuff back here afterwards. Verity can transport us to the location and gives us this map. Afterlife Casino. So, security mar- mirrors are going to act as cameras. We need a pass card to get into, what, these blue doors here? This, there's a restaurant underneath this waterfall, so yeah, this is an overlook cliff edge. Presumably entering from here into the docks. Oh, underneath, underneath the waterfall, there are stairs back. Where do the stairs come out then? Here. So you can go down to the restaurant via, via these stairs. Laundry. What do I laundry for in a casino? Oh, because it's a spa and it's baths and a lounge. Just as in the mission before, you get a bag of holding. She offers the characters 100 gold each and says, if you get more than my five grand in the casino, you can keep it. You could get her to raise the payment to 150 gold. You have two days to steal the statue and the tournament is two nights from now. The, com- the bag of holdings command word is Hyacinth. But that command word is for getting things back out of the bag and she doesn't tell them that command word. So they put the things in and can't get them out. As far as she knows, you arrive on wooden boats that shuttle visitors to and from the casino inside a cavern. Verity knows no other way to enter the casino. Tieflings only, as employees. Doors to employee only areas of bright green trim and are magically locked. You need the pass card. Those mirrors are security cameras and they reflect back into a, its twin in the security office. That's the inventive of how to get cameras in the DD world. Prizes in a vault, fair enough. If they get caught mid job, they, there are holding cells. And the gnome will make them a counter offer if Verity's name comes up. If the characters re- refuse his counter offer, Quentin has them tossed out of the casino and sent up the river in a gondola. So they could actually properly botch this then, and the characters just get sent on the way. End of mission. Basically, you've got to scout the casino first, ideally. Disguises, dealers, bartenders and other floor employees wear sleek uniform that consists of black tuxedo pants and red jackets with thin lapels. So you can snatch uniforms from the laundry area. Since all casino employees are tieflings, non-tiefling characters who wish to disguise themselves need disguise kits or magic. You have to succeed a charisma deception check. 
higher than the passive perception of the workers. If that fails, you can bribe them. Every casino employee carries a pass card made of green metal embossed with a devil's smiling, winking visage. Anyone can then bypass the arcane locked door. Slight of hand of 15 to steal the card. So there's a natural cavern by a river nicknamed the River Styx. The waterfall isn't a safe way to enter or leave the casino. So Verita gets them on a carriage, possibly, to find their way to the casino. And there's a sign on the road, this way to the afterlife, in gaudy gold lettering, with an arrow pointing. And there's a bit of a taxi turnaround at the end. They are greeted by a red-robed tiefling commoner in a heavy hooded robe, and he waits silently for the characters. The ferrier plays the part of Sharon, Charon, on the real river sticks. I'll have to look that up. The tiefling keeps their hoods up at all times and doesn't speak to the passengers. And if they try to get him to speak, eventually he'll break character and say, I'm just trying to do my job. The ferrier ably navigates your boat downriver and into an underground chamber. As the taxi mouth swallows you, you hear music over the echo of a distant waterfall. The cave ceiling rises high above your heads and dancing light bobs. Dancing lights bob around hang, hanging stalactites. The river winds through the casino floor, splitting the carnivorous chamber in two and passing under arched stone bridges at various points. Card tables and other gaming stations, surrounded by chattering patrons, fill the open space. A cheer rises from deep in the cavern, which is decorated to suggest excitement, opportunity and excess. The ferrier steers your boat towards the left bank and the boat rocks as it bumps up against a wooden dock. The ferrier then raises one hand, gesturing at the glittering sights before you and intones in a deep, raspy voice, Welcome to the afterlife. Temptation awaits. Anyone who tips the ferrier gets inspiration. There are four cashiers stations where the cashiers have smiling devil masks and make your cash for chips switch. There's a golden pitchfork on the side of every chip. So there's no money to be stolen from me because it's magically switched into the vault. You put this, you put your money in the cashier, she gives you plastic and that money disappears back into the vault. Withdrawals of more than 250 gold require a second cashier to confirm the transaction. Transactions through the sigils are automatically recorded in the magical ledger in area A15. Ceilings are 50 foot high. Ceilings in the employee only areas are 24 high. Doors have an arcane lock. We know about the employee pass cards. You can DC 25 athletics check the doors open. Five tiefling security guards using the thuds, thug stats will keep the peace in here. Breaking one of the security mirrors will cause, cause two guards to go investigate and then go and tell Quentin. A patron who is caught cheating is escorted by 1d3 security guards to the holding cells and you are booted out. So here are some of the games you can actually play, which is really good. You place your bet, you roll 5d12s and keep these hidden for everyone else. So starting t- to the left of the tiefling dealer, each participant re- reveals one of their d12s. Then you reveal a second, then everyone reveals a third. Then you can have three options. You match the bet, you raise their bet, in which all participants must must also match the bet, or you give in, called folding, or you forfeit any bet that you've placed and drop out of the game. Each person who hasn't folded totals their die rolls, and the one with the highest total wins. The winner becomes the dealer for the next game. It's a case of how much money will you put in, and how confident are you that you have got the highest roll, and trying to bluff each other. And people back out thinking, I ain't wasting any more money just to see your hands. Life and Death is a dice game played between the tiefling and the player. The tiefling rolls, everyone rolls a d20. If a player rolls lower than the dealer, the dealer wins. A player who rolls higher than the dealer gets their own money back and that money from the casino. If you tie, you can roll again, but you have to double the money. Push your luck. When a player wins, they can opt to play again immediately. They bet everything they won on the last roll on this also. And if they win, the house doubles their bet. Copper slots. So, spinning cylinders. Six golden runes on each. You roll 5d6. And then if you have three of a kind, it's double what you put in. Four of a kind, it's four times what you put in. 
and five of a kind it's ten times what you put in. I love it, big time. Quentin Toggle Pocket dresses garishly, slicks back his wavy hair, curls his, his moustache. Yeah, we get the idea. He's a professional three dragon anti player. He lost against Verity Kai and was humiliated. He then betrayed her on purpose. Quentin sees himself as the victim of Verity. He's happy to monologue if he gets the chance. He's usually in his office or visiting the holding cells. Now, we have the usual table of people who are wandering around that the players can interact with. We have a much better map of the casino. This drop here is 80 feet, that's 8d6 falling damage. So there is a staircase down to the restaurant. A12 was at the guards room, I think. His office was A14. So these will be the out of bounds places. We have the player map. Two tiefling attendants help the patrons out of the boats. These are the rules of the casino. A2, three dragon anti tables, copper slot machines, two cashier booths, and a nice relaxing lounge security mirror. A3, dis. This section contains rows of copper slot machines, five life and death tables, each with a different value bet. So you can lose more and more money. Bigger payout, bigger reward. Mineros. A narrow racing track dominates the centre of this section, with shouting and cheering patrons clustered around it. Numbered rats scurry along their respective lanes. As the rats cross the finish lines, cries of victory and gut groans of defeat erupt from the patrons. Just south of the track are a large are a pair of lounge chairs and two cashier booths staffed by tieflings wearing devil masks. Another mirror. A5. Bar Malbulge? I'm going to say that. Features two bars and plenty of plush, comfortable chairs and cushions. The two beer bartenders serve spirits and a bitter ale called Brimstone Gulp. What the hell is that word? Phlegathocean? I don't know. I'm sorry. And Stygian Baths? The air in here is warm and more humid than in the casino proper and bears a sulfurous fragrance. So yeah, sauna, spa area. Laundry, you can get some clothes out of there, it's disguises. Cirque Malodomini, hour long performances every four hours. Acrobatics, trained animals, banjo player. Trained lion, jumping through hoops. Big circus area. Cania? Steps lead to the sunken floor of a gambling haven ringed with pillars of black basalt. Seven three dragon anti tables take up the floor space. A three foot high shelf carved into the far wall blares a glass case, displayed in which is a gold statuette of a winged devil. Standing next to the display case is a tiefling guard. These are high stakes tables open to anyone, while the easternmost two tables are reserved for the final rounds of the tournament. We have a tournament seating layout. They all have a little bit of information for you to make them remember memorable the character can see that damaging the case triggers a magical trap on the display case you will be paralyzed the waterfall is a hundred feet tall oh fair enough the restaurant is called nessus here is a lovely little menu employee only staging area and animal cages Three crates rest on the floor in one corner and a portable cage on rollers sits beside them. Bars for two larger cages and a wooden chest against the east wall near the biggest cage. Resting on the lid is a ring of keys. Three trained baboons, a lion, three tiefling acrobats also rehearsed together in the middle of the room. The wooden chest has juggling pins etc but there's a portion of animal friendship which will come in handy obviously. Employee lounge coffee table and chairs. Three tiefling employees having a break. They overhear that there's an animated minotaur skeleton as added security. Quentin refers to it as Virgil. It can be controlled using a magical rod that Quentin keeps in area 14, his office. Three guard staff, the three guards staff the security office across the hall. Quentin's office. L-shaped desk size for a gnome, cushion chairs, knickknacks. A painted bas relief spans the entire north wall, depicts a host of winged devils catching mortals as they plunge into the depths of hell. Here is Quentin. Well now, what can I do for you? He shrewdly shuns combat, but he draws his rapier and defends himself if cornered. As an action, he mutters a prayer, causes two spined devils to emerge. He can call for three security guards fairly easily. He knows all his staff. He'll make them a better offer if they will quit. Quentin will 
write a little letter and hand it to them and give them some casino chips. The letter says, It is such a disappointment when one attempts to conceal their lack of skill by sending others to do their dirty work. Nevertheless, after all the time, after all this time, it appears I am, in fact, better than you. There's usual stationary supplies in his desk. The bottom drawer has the magical rod to control the Minotaur skeleton. He has nine gold rings on his fingers and keeps an employee pass card in his waistcoat pocket. Clerk's office has the magical ledger saying about all the money that comes over the tills. There's about five grand in coinage in this place at this moment. Security office, a ring of eight keys dangle from a hook next to the south door. Each cell and chest has a corresponding key that unlocks it in area 17. In area 17, six jailed cells, two padlocked wooden chests, thieves tools if you wish. Both chests are unlocked and empty, but weapons can be locked here for safekeeping. The vault itself, the double door leading to the vault has cast iron devil faces mounted on the south side. If a creature without a card comes within 10 feet, the devil faces open their mouths and both breathe a massive line of fire down the hallway. 3d6 on a fail, fire damage. The vault is 40 feet deep and almost twice as wide. A security mirror stares back at you from the far wall. Seven treasure chests rest on low tables positions against, positioned against the north and east walls, and two tall wardrobes stand against the south wall. Standing in the middle of the room is the animated skeleton of a monitor. So Virgil can be telepathically commanded. In these iron chests, loads of money. In a wardrobe, the necklace, figurine, and a plus one weight rapier. So you can return with loot, return empty handed, or return with Quentin's letter. I think it just sounds great. You go up to a casino, play some real games with your friends, and also interact, sneak about, fight some guards, fight a minotaur skeleton, maybe some devils. Level 2, that sounds a lot of fun for level 2. I really am a fan of that. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.